Hey, what's up, tankers? Buckskin Snuggy here with a quick tank review for the Tier 8 Louver. I might have probably pronounced that wrong just now. It's the Low or the Louver or the Louvre. I'm not really too sure what it is, but it's the Tier 8 Premium German Heavy Tank. It's basically the 70 ton Super Heavy Tank, actually. This thing is a beast, man. Okay, so the first thing I'd like to talk about with this tank is the armor. The armor is fairly reliable, especially when it comes into side scraping. If you look at the sides, 100 millimeters, that's pretty good for side scraping. This tank really accelerates like like with that, with along with most other German uh, tier eight and higher, you know, heavy tanks. They're they're pretty good for that. Uh, the ass end of it's got 80 mils. That's not really enough to really pull anything off special, but. Uh, if you look at the front, 120 has got a decent little angle there. It's not really super angled, but basically anything with 175 millimeters of penetration or less is pretty much going to bounce off you. So if those pesky IS tanks or an IS-6 is trying to hit you in the upper plate, they're not going to penetrate you. But the lower plate, you'll see it's got a really flat lower glacis there, and that is a really, really easy, easy spot for tanks to be penetrating you. So that's another reason why you want to be side scraping with this tank, and you want to, you know, kind of cover that plate up as much as you possibly can. If we look at the armor, though, the armor is pretty decent. 120 mils on the front, 80 on the sides, and 80 on the rear. And as you can see, it's extremely well-rounded. It's really well-rounded. So a lot of shells that people are going to be bouncing off, are going to be shooting at you, are going to be instantly bouncing off you. And a funny thing is, too, is if you look at the back of this turret, it's got a big square plate. That spot actually has more armor on the back there than the rest of the turret in general. I'm not really too sure why. You would think right away that that's actually a weak spot. If you guys are ever fighting one of these things and you do see the back of its turret, do not bother shooting that plate. The only real stipulation that I have with this turret, though, is if you look underneath the gun mantlet, that line underneath, pretty much right around to the front there, is, it's, I basically call it like the throat of the turret. That is a very, very, very weak spot for this tank. If you ever get a chance to be fighting one from the front and you can't, you know, if you're up close and you're brawling with him, uh, try to punch him right there and you'll tear through him every time. The commander's hatch can be a little bit big with this tank. As you can see, it's kind of got some size to it. So getting hull down is, you know, really effective with this tank, of course, because of the turret in general. But yeah, that turret, that commander's hatch can be really kind of tricky. The one thing I would like to point out with this tank, though, is a lot of people have bought this tank and consider it to be absolute crap, and which I do not believe it is. If you look at the gun, okay, the gun is very reliable. 234 standard penetration, you know, that's, that's a pretty good average penetration for a tier 8 heavy tank. 320 alpha damage, nothing really too special, but that's still pretty good for the fact that it gets 5 rounds a minute. So you're basically, it's about a 12 second reload, you know, so that's not really too bad. But it's the accuracy that's really great with this gun. Like most other German tanks, you know, especially the TDs and somewhat for the heavies, the, the gun is very accurate. 0.33, that is very reliable. Uh, 0.285 for the aim time, that's that's pretty good, you know, if, if we, like in my other video I was showing with the T-34 Tier 8 Premium Heavy Tank for the Americans, that one has a 3.4 aim time, which is absolutely atrocious. The traverse speed for this tank, it's not really something too great, 24 degrees per second, that's not bad. Uh, the turret traverse speed is 23. That's that's kind of also a little bit tricky to work with. The view range is pretty good with this tank. 400 meters, that's really fantastic for a tier 8 heavy. But one other thing I'd really like to point out with this tank, though, is the Louvre actually has one of the worst camo value ratings in the game. So it is really, really, really easy for this tank to get detected, even when you are sniping far in the back it's yeah it's still possible for you to get spotted um but yeah like i said a lot of people really don't care for this tank they say it's really crappy and it's hard to brawl with which it is which it is don't get me wrong um if you've ever played the tiger one tank a lot of people will tell you the best play style for that tank is to be a sniper role with it you kind of want to play it like a tank destroyer you know you kind of hide in the back a little bit you use that extremely accurate gun with a good punch to basically be sniping kids from the background. You don't really want to get up too close and personal with this tank. And if we take a quick look at the specs for speed, 
do not believe that number okay I get it that 35 kilometers per hour is the top speed for this tank but you will rarely ever ever reach that top speed going downhill you will still have a hard time reaching that top speed you gotta fully understand this tank weighs 70 tons 800 horsepower for the acceleration you know like it sounds great and all but the power to weight ratio is very very poor in this tank this thing when artillery sees this tank their mouth waters because they're like oh my god that tank is super slow easy target easy 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 target so you really do not want to be getting spotted in this tank you don't really want to be in the front of the t you know front of the lines trying to rip shit up and kick some ass you gotta kinda play conservative with this tank and I guarantee if you keep that in mind and you have that sort of mentality play style you will you will put in some very good work with this tank um, as you can see for equipment here I basically run the super heavy spa liner 50 percent chance to protect crew from critical damage uh, 50 percent armor protection from ramming and explosions okay that though in itself from the explosions that does not mean from when an artillery shell penetrates you it only gives you 50 percent protection to splash damage you have to keep that in mind so it's another reason why you really don't want to be spotted with this thing because like I said Artie is going to gun for you there could be six tanks around you I guarantee if that artillery is smart he's going to aim for you so keep that in mind uh, ventilation as I said in my other video before you know a lot of people don't realize ventilation will actually help increase your camo value so that's kind of essential for this tank not to mention it will increase your reload times your accuracy I mean your aim time sorry it will help you with your acceleration um, and a gun rammer is always reliable for this tank because it has a decent aim time already I wouldn't exactly go with a vertical stabilizer or a laying drive I would try to cut down that aim time as much as I can because if the aim time is only two and a half seconds and your reload is about 12 seconds I guarantee you're gonna have this tank fully aimed before that shell reloads you know what I mean so you really want to be cutting down that reload time as much as you possibly can uh, for supplies because the penetration with this gun is fairly fairly above average for a tier 8 you don't really need too many premiums but like I said because you are going to be into a tier 10 matches with this tank you know it does get normal matchmaking for a tier 8 premium it's not exactly like the super Pershing or the FCM 50 ton you are going to see tier 10s in this so I kind of bring half and half when it comes to shells I like to make sure that you know if I'm shooting at a Jaggeroo or the side of an E100 and he's partially angled or something I I tend to be shooting premiums to make sure I want to make sure every shell counts you know what I mean and like any other premium tank because this thing's gonna earn a buttload of silver a large first aid kit a large repair kit and a fire extinguisher is definitely a must I prefer to go with the automatic fire extinguisher especially for this tank because it is a German tank a lot of people don't understand that German tanks in this game they all have frontal transmissions okay so if you're getting shot in the front lower plate you are going to be set on fire every other tank in the game you got to shoot him in the ass you got to hit his engine just to set him on fire not with the German tanks the German tanks the only exception for that is the E50M the E50M was a prototype tank where it actually had the transmission moved into the rear of the tank which was very beneficial for that tank line um, but yeah you know like I said with these large repair kits and large first aid kits the passive boosts are always nice 30 percent for your crew 10 percent for your repairs always highly effective uh, for the crews, I kind of have a half-assed crew on here. It's nothing really too special. I took my good crew and I actually slapped him onto my tier 10 tanks. But uh, let's see, brothers in arms, always a must. Uh, six cents, especially in this tank, because you really want to know when you're detected. Because if you get detected in this thing, like I said, there's enemy artillery on the map. He will eat you for lunch, breakfast, and dinner. Okay, um, clutch braking is really effective with this tank, mainly because you want to be side scraping with this tank. You want to get some good wiggle action and tur uh, chassis ch turn speed. You know, you really want to have that down pat. I threw camel on this thing because I'm trying my best to keep this thing from being spotted. Um, you'll notice right now I'm working on situational awareness. After that, I will be going for recon. But if I honestly had any brains, preventative maintenance is 
is definitely a must for this tank. And any other German tank out there, you really, really want that preventative maintenance. It's really going to cut down the ability for enemy tanks to set you on fire. Um, but yeah, Dead Eye and Snapshot, you know, those are pretty beneficial to this tank. You usually want to cut down the aim times on any tank you possibly can, but the aim time isn't really too bad on this tank, so I wouldn't really worry about it too much. Um, I, I prefer to go for uh, situational awareness and recon just more or less because, you know, I want to be able to detect people with that great view range, you know, like 400 meters is very reliable in this game. Uh, Mentor would be really good for this tank because it is a premium tank, you know, your crew and your silver will be training and earning a lot faster, so that extra 10% really does help. Um, yeah, for the most part though, I'm not really too sure why I don't have repairs on here right now. I think that's more or less because this crew is being switched between my JTIG 8.8, .8. yeah, as you can see it has no crew on there right now too, but because it's a heavy tank and you are going to be tracked a lot, you know, most tanks really, most heavy tanks have a real problem with being tracked a lot, I would definitely recommend repairs. Um, but yeah, honestly, this is this is a really reliable tank. Don't believe people when they tell you it's the absolute worst tier 8 premium. I don't really think so. It's it's a really good tank. Like I said, the best advice I could give you is play it like a sniper. Don't get too aggressive, you know. In tier 8, you can you could get aggressive when the opportunity arises and whatnot. You could be at the front of the lines kicking some ass, but when it comes to tier 9s and tier 10s, don't even bother. You're going to get eaten alive in this tank. This tank is a sniper support role. It is not a brawler. You should not be at the front of the lines. This tank, sometimes you're going to be playing this tank and you're going to be sniping, doing your thing, what you should supposed to be doing with this tank. And you notice people are going to be pinging you on the map like, come on, you're a big tier 8 heavy, get up there, blah, 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 kick some ass, you know, don't camp back like a scrub. Well, I guarantee, obviously, those people do not own the Louvre, and they do not know how you're supposed to play with it. So, don't give up on this tank. This tank is great for training German crews, and it's great for earning silver. And, you know, if you just kind of want a chill game where you want to kick back and you want to knock some people out from a distance, this tank is very reliable for that. Um, let's see if we can get into some gameplay here and see this baby in action. All right, so tier nine match. Ended up making a quick dash here to the left side. Figure I get into a solid hold down position. Target acquired. Target unlocked. A nice lucky shot on the turret of the IS-3. This gun can be really effective, really effective gun. That was just a pure fail. There was no way that would have penetrated. So you can see it hit the outside of this turret. In a decent position, though, haven't been spotted yet whatsoever. Now the turret on the mutant can be pretty tricky to fight against, but if you look on the top, he's got a nice big commander patch. And sure enough, bam. That was enough to ring his bell. And the front, front part of the turret, just on the outside of the mantle of the IS-6, that's always a good soft spot to hit them when they're, when they're hauled down. Commander's hatch is always nice too, don't get me wrong. Luckily enough, somebody finished off that mutant before he came around the corner and actually detected me. So the Hail Mary blind shot at the IS-6 and managed to punch through him. Figured I'd throw out just another one and hope for the best. You know, I have done it before and it actually paid off, but as you can see, that one did not. Now, quickly detected by the IS-8. So I'm somewhat hull down right now. The only way he can be shooting me is at my turret, and sure enough, it bounces one off the turret. You gotta love how rounded that turret is. It actually reminds me of like a giant helmet. Oh, I 
was really hoping to get the kill shot on that IS point, but of course they got him. So quickly displaced since I realized both ISs are actually in a pretty good spot. Realized that the M103 is kind of trying to peek over at me, but he re realizes he doesn't have the gun depression to pull it off, so instinctively he plays it smart and backs off. Luckily there was no artillery in this match. Artillery is the bane of this thing's existence. And this cowboy comes flying over. Finishes off the carn. I don't think the carn really stood a chance there. That was just a fail shot. Sure enough, I hit the dead track. We're stuck. So that was a foolish shell. That was a foolish shot. Now that Centurion 1 to the left was really pissing me off. But I figured I wanted to commit on the real major threat right now because that guy can pack a lot more of a punch. Than that century on one. He'll do he'll pepper me for a while, but I had enough health to spare that it wasn't really the biggest deal. Figured I'd at least take one shot at him most carefully and then commit right back to that 103. I'm actually really lucky that 103 didn't eat me alive, because if he was popping me the whole time, I would have been a goner. Good shot on that 103. As you can see, it's just a stock Centurion on 1, so he wasn't really exactly ringing my bell. He was just more or less irritating me. So we'll try to get repositioned here with a good gun depression. Try to get a good shot on this 103. Sure enough, ammo. That was a nice lucky shot. Wait on that reload, sure enough, quickly catch him before he finishes off our 4 sig. And all in all, a pretty good match. Great job, men. But like, as I said before, see what I was saying, like you try not to really be at the front of the lines with this tank, you know, try to play a little bit conservatively. It's got good gun depression, so, you know, getting hauled down is really, really effective with this tank. 2,761 damage, not really the greatest of matches with this, but still enough to pull in a good chunk of change. 1388 base experience, that's always good for your crew. Now 48 Patton, he's somebody I wanted to make disappear right away because I knew he would get me detected and because doing that there is any artillery on this team. And like I said, I guarantee if the artillery was smart he would be going for the louver tank. If you guys ever are playing artillery and you see louvers, by all means, it should be an easy kill for you. They actually buffed the top armor, like the very top of the turret and the top of the chassis, just because this thing was getting eaten alive by artillery. And sure enough, there you go. There's tanks around me that are fully detected, and yet who does the arty go for? He goes for me. Something you're just going to have to get used to in this tank, man. You, you do not want to be detected. And as soon as I fade off the enemy radar, I try to move around in accordance to the fact that maybe I could confuse them to where I'm going and what I'm up to. Tiger 2 foolishly yeah, comes boys. across the field. See, time. that's that's why I tell people the first 30 seconds will make or break you. If he would have committed to going to the spot where he wanted to go 30 seconds before he actually did, like it was two and a half minutes into the match and now he finally attempts to try to make it across the field, Big mistake. Everybody's already in position to spot you and shit on you. And then here, here you go again. Look at that. That's the effectiveness, the accuracy of this gun, and it's got a great punch to it. Sure enough, I hit that guy right in the ammo. Tried throwing out a Hail Mary blind shot on there, but completely missed. Notice that artillery was exposed on enemy map on our map there, so I figured I'd kind of make a quick dash up there. Wanted to return the favor for him punching me a decent one there. I ended up getting some fairly, fairly decent splash. Enemy is hit. 
and because this tank has a decent view range and it's got the accuracy, you know, try not to push up too much. Get up just enough so that you can see these guys on your on your view range. You know what I mean? Like you want to be able to see them, but you want to have it so that they can't see you when you shoot. Because if you notice this whole time when you're shooting, I'm actually not detected whatsoever, and that's what you want to do. You want to get these enemy tanks within a 400 to 500 meter view range distance. You got a mic. Quickly realize the E75's up here, Target and lock. this tank, it Target has a gun lock. strong enough to punch through the lower plate on the E75. As you can see, he was angled just enough where my shell basically bounced off his side. Plant one right inside for 347, not the greatest roll, but enough to hurt him. Still making that silver with these kind of hits. His tracks ate that shell. That one didn't go through. Try to reposition the gun. And sure enough, he's done. Kill, boys. Alright. So I'll try to get on some flat ground here with the least amount of ground resistance to so try to make a mad dash up there to actually kind of put in a fight with that last heavy tank, but I kind of knew it was a long shot though with this many guys. But like I said, as you can see, this tank really does excel at being a sniper. It's, it's really tricky to kind of get this tank out there to brawl with. That lower plate is a really huge weak spot. That throat part of the turret, another great weak spot. You know, if you can, just oh, yeah, be conservative nice. when you're playing this tank, man. You will make a lot of silver. You will survive a lot of battles, and you could really get some good hits in there. Even with a standard account, if it's not premium. I did a fairly mediocre match here. Still would have pulled in 47,000 without a premium tank, you know. 2100 damage, not the greatest. As you can see, the T62A completely dominated in this match, so of course he was going to be MVP. But, you know, I outplayed a couple of tier 9s um, and most of the tier 8s. I'm the only tier 8 up there in fourth place. 2300 experience with a premium account, that's pretty good for your crew. It's, it's a really solid, reliable tank. I would recommend for anybody to get this if they like playing the sniper role. Um, I hope you guys enjoy the video. I hope it was informative. Good luck in your next battles, guys, and see you guys out there.